So I have been doing DevSecOps, which is a permutation of rugged DevOps. Um, I've been doing this for around 15 years now, and uh, it didn't necessarily have a name before, but I'm really one of those people who advocates for trying to do things different when things don't succeed. And so um, my journey had started a long while back. Um, if you're gonna do something, do it well, do it early, do it rugged. Um, I tend to believe that DevOps got started around the same time that a lot of the things that I was working on um, became vital to the organization I was at. And um, there's definitely a few people in this room that I've, I've worked with in the past. Um, you know, DevOps.com got bought in 2004. I remember when Agile was born. I remember when a lot of these things came to bear. And then if you look at this graph from Google, basically the trends show you that really nothing got started until somewhere around 2010. Somewhere in that 2011 time frame, I got a really big wake up call and a really big lesson. I had been at the heart of a big breach um, helping to restore it and unfortunately couldn't necessarily get everybody to do the things that I wanted them to do at the time at the leadership level. And so this was an opportunity to do things different and really build a better data center. And so from somewhere around 2010, I uh, also found Rugged Software and loved the manifesto, thought a lot about it, really wanted to figure out how to do it, and couldn't find a single practitioner. So along with that came the chase for the cloud. Um, as you can well see, I think that you know, Intuit has already said at reInvent that we are all in on the public cloud and we're chasing what is looking like 30% of the industry right now, and also another 58% that are trying to come in as well. Um, that means that I do a lot of this every day. I actually have this sign in my office, posted prominently. Um, I think that I actually owe a bunch of people that work with me this sign so that they can do the same with me. We started our organization about two years ago to do cloud security, in enterprise-wide, with, pub with public cloud and also with sensitive data, which as you can imagine is a real headbanger. And, what was that? Yes, I agree with you. Yes, it is a true, true headbanger. So, um, I also know that uh, somewhere around the same time, Josh Corman said something pretty provocative and I thought that I'd bring it up. This is the end of security as we know it. Well, that's been the last 15 years for me. I don't know that I've ever been a traditionalist. Um, everybody that I've ever worked with has done something akin to living a security lifestyle and helping organizations to improve their security overall. This is uh, approximately six years later after he said that, and uh, I believe that changing security is a good thing. The way that it's been done has caused breaches for years. The way that people actually do things and make decisions has really not necessarily been the best and we actually have a lot more opportunity as an industry. So a really ugly little secret, um, DevOps tend to push uh, code several times a day. Hackers tend to find issues several times a day. And security professionals tend not to make very many security decisions, um, and especially only when asked. And if you think about that for just a moment, it means that Right now, the security for your organization is being decided by somebody who doesn't necessarily know what's happening or what's going on in your environment. Attackers are going after your workloads, and the folks that actually make the decisions, push the buttons, are not necessarily going to have all the information at their fingertips. So uh, the rest of this talk is about how to change that. In a Deming world, there are a variety of things to really think about. The decisions that need to be made need to be made with context by the people who push the buttons every day. Um, one of the biggest things that we've discovered is that there's a really interesting missing feedback loop. Um, if you can imagine the security that happens every day is happening in your SOC. Your SOC sees the attackers, they stop the attackers from being able to get onto something. They may even take down the workload. They may cause somebody in the development team to get involved. You've seen it before, long 
remediation cycles. But what if that could change? What if the feedback that you give every day is going to be part of your feedback loop to the developers? What if it could be incorporated back into design? What if every day you could have the attacker information that's coming in from your SIM, from your SOC operations, be fed back into your development team so that the 30 times that they push something per day, they could actually make these changes in near real time and get ahead of attackers. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't just be able to detect things or protect your workloads, you'd also be able to thwart the attackers in near real time. And so we're arguing that today, feedback loops need to really be incorporated back, that the SOC, the security operations center that you run in your organization, whether it be one person or 20 people or 50 people, that all the information that they amass and all of the things that they can provide from an attacker standpoint actually gets fed back into your DevOps team so that they can make better decisions every day. Hackers have a lot of opportunities. They not only are able to fish your organization, so the people that work there and actually are susceptible to email and also social engineering, um, but also your processes might even have gaps. You may find out that the things that you believe are working properly are not necessarily being measured effectively and that you may even have opportunities for attackers to take advantage of you. Um, that there may be room for fraud and that mistakes really do happen. Uh, Six Sigma is put in place for a reason. You really get better when you get to a better Six Sigma, right? Well, that also means that you've made a lot of mistakes along the way to try and make it so that your organization has better Six Sigma practices. And then finally, when you think about it, attackers have the ability to go after technology. And what's great about understanding this is that when we talk about Deming and we talk about trying to have fewer, better suppliers, Really, this is an opportunity area for us. It's what the attackers go after every day. But they utilize this entire ecosystem, and that's actually how they get the most opportunities. They take advantage of all three, not individually, but united. So one of the things to think about is, how do you get grounded in reality? What are the seven principles that you need to use every day to run a rugged crew, a group of people who come in every day to make your organization better, who may or may not be embedded on your DevOps teams, but who are there to provide value from a security perspective? You need to think about having your organization add security to its wish list, that it needs to be part of keeping the lights on, that outages and availability are not the only things that you need to worry about, that security is also part of those demands for the business, and that your customers actually do require you to have secure business. Everyone's responsible for security. This means that anybody who's pushing buttons, who's making decisions, they do need to understand what they have to be responsible for from a security perspective. It means that the information that they have at their fingertips every day, if it sucks, then guess what? It's your obligation as a security professional to make it better and to make it every, better every day. Perfection is absolutely overrated. Mistakes will happen. In fact, experiments will help you to understand that mistakes happen. And the better you get at making experiments useful in your organization, the more likely that the mistakes that you make will never be made again. Reacting can be costly. So everybody who starts to add in your security operations capabilities, who's trying to provide things as a reactionary capability, it's not enough. You must build security in to your workloads. You have to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to think about what you're going to design in, how you're going to implement it, what's being built. And then not only that, but as it's being deployed, testing it, making sure that it's rugged, making sure that the operations that you run every day are going to live up against attackers. It is a fight, it is a war. Compliance is important, but it's not security. That's right, I said it. PCI DSS, love you, it's a great you know, thing to do. But it's not security. Being able to um, have checklists that you operate against or that you pull evidence for doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to stop the next attacker. There are organizations out there that have been PCI compliant before they've been breached. And then during a breach review, it's been determined that they're no longer compliant. And the reason for that is that they didn't maintain their ruggedness. A blaming culture is dangerous. That's right. People that blame and make it so that opportunities are um, a problem 
don't really understand what it means to work together to unite against a single mission and to realize that really we are all out there to help people with the software that we develop every day, to help our customers, and really to stay ahead of attackers that take advantage of naive and um, simple mistakes. Uh, continuously testing and detecting things within your environment. So if you're going to put together anything, what I, would what I would tell you is that putting together a harness, a reconnaissance harness that an attacker would use, running those tests every day, making them part of your CICD pipeline, running them as part of your DevOps practices is really a big way to remove um, software defects every day and as part of the 30 pushes of software a day. Um, we've seen a lot of improvement incrementally that really helps our organization and we measure it and we've seen incremental progress by folding it into a continuous deployment pipeline. So keeping the lights on, we are one of 66% of the companies out there adopting DevOps. That's right, there's lots of organizations out there doing it. We are at the tip of that spear right now because we're looking at things like cloud capabilities. But more importantly, we know that the security decisions that get made by our DevOps professionals and, our, and for their workloads are made such that we have to provide guardrails and guidelines. And in addition, making it so that those are easier, so that they're at the fingertips of a developer and that we speak the developer's language. And that's part of keeping the lights on. In other words, your business will not survive in the future if you no longer take security seriously. And you have to build it into your workloads. You want to enlist everyone. So most organizations have a 100-10-1 ratio. 100 developers to 10 operations to one security professional. That's right, most organizations. If you look at the ones that you might have, you might have maybe it's three and not one. But really, those security professionals are hard to find. And so are the 10 de uh, operations folks. And so are the 100 developers. But when you mash them all together and you get to a DevOps crew, by the way, we're all fighting for the same skill sets. And really, it's about trying to not just find the skill sets the best that you can possibly buy, but really looking for folks that you can also bring along with you and enlisting everyone so that they can learn and be passionate about this space is, is a critical capability. Mistakes happen. They, they absolutely become part of your fabric. They are part of the way in which you have to operate. Your experiments are crucial. In fact, what you'll find is that if you run your experiments well, on average, you'll be able to correct defects 30 times more often than if you run a traditional security capability. It's an amazing thing to see when you start to publish uh, defects into a bug tracking software from a security perspective and watching as developers go through and remediate those issues immediately. Protection is ideal and detection is a must. Um, DevOps teams have a 50% faster mean time to resolution. That means if you come up with a security defect, it is likely that a good DevOps crew, a high-performing DevOps crew, will be able to resolve that issue faster than anyone else in the organization just simply because they know how to take the feedback, they know how to make it use of it, and they know how to resolve those issues in near real time. Compliance programs won't stop a breach. Um, as part of this, I did a little investigation and went out and looked at the uh, Verizon breach report. And what I found amazingly um, interesting was that most of the organizations out there that have been breached that were PCI compliant before they were breached, actually, when um, reviewed after the fact, zero companies within the 10 years that this was being reviewed had actually been noticed as being compliant thereafter. And that means that really compliance is just a, a checkbox. It's a once in... Um, a period assessment, and that really doesn't help the organization to maintain their security posture and capability. So we have to do better as an organization. You have to start to build things in and make it so that your organization can not only take advantage of having PCI, but also making sure it's built into your automation as well. High performing is where it's at. I heard somebody earlier today talk about high-performing teams, and I think it's an amazing thing. When you have a high-performing organization and a high-performing team, on average, you have 50% better capabilities. It's a blameless culture. There is more efficiency to be had. Um, 
Organizations that are blaming actually are 30% less efficient. And um, when you have a high-performing team, they're five times faster at doing damn near everything. In fact, what I would tell you is an organization that gets a security defect in their inbox, sometimes if they're high performing, it's done in 10 minutes because they're looking for the feedback loop and they're looking to get that information in so that they can make immediate use of it. And then finally, from the, the seventh principle, continuous improvement. We've all seen it. We've all seen the guidelines out there that have asked for maturity levels one through five. Um, you've got ad hoc capabilities. How many of us have really stayed at that ad hoc level for years? Well, I can tell you that majority of the industry talks about ad hoc processes and has been for as long as I think I can remember. Um, continuous improvement is something that comes along with DevOps and 30% uh, fewer defects. That means that the attack surface for your organization really will benefit by implementing something continuous. Continuous delivery, continuous remediation, and then continuous feedback loop from a security perspective. Meaning that everyone's playing the game all at the same time and your security professionals are not only helping you to understand the attack surface for your workloads, but really figuring out how to make it so that they're also attacking your workloads as quickly as an attacker might. Imagine having a red team out there in your environment who's looking for things to exploit that made it through the CI CD pipeline that you might be running and where tests don't necessarily always show up the defects. Imagine having that near real time experience of having a red team looking for opportunities, having the reconnaissance capabilities that an attacker does and looking for things that change and drift in your pipeline. So this is all great. Everybody has heard the seven principles. I'm sure you're ready to all go out and put these into your environment. But really the, the question that I always get asked is what does this mean? And as a security professional, what it really means is these are the things that you do every day. You're leaning in, you're not always saying no. In fact, quite often you're trying to gain context, provide information back to your DevOps teams. You're looking to have an open collaboration capability. You're figuring out how to make your security services an API. You're gonna pull me off? <laughs> I have two more slides. And then you're really trying to do um, business-driven security scores. Adding in things like grades can be an a immense benefit to your company. Um, security is really difficult for people to understand and for developers to understand. And so by making it so that somebody can come into a portal or get information back that's easily consumable about their defects so that they know that they need to immediately respond to them can be an immense benefit. And then I think that a lot of these other things, they're all available on the DevSecOps website for Manifesto. Um, they are things that absolutely we've implemented, we've experimented with, and have become part of our everyday core mission. We build tools like these um, decision guidelines, and we offer these to our development team so that they can make the decisions with context immediately upon being able to design something or build it. And that makes it so that we're not security professionals that get in the way or are part of the gates that are shown on the Deming slide earlier. And finally, what if you come in every day, and this is what you're looking at, you see your grade, and you know that immediately you're either doing well or you're not doing so well and you have to do something about it. Security as code is translating something like that piece of code into something consumable for a developer so that they can make the changes necessary. And finally, I'm gonna leave you with something else. Getting involved in a community is absolutely essential to being able to do this at speed and scale in your organization. Coming and contributing to the rugged movement, the DevSecOps movement, no matter what it is, compliance of velocity, you're gonna hear about this from uh, Justin Arb Arbuckle. You're gonna be able to understand a lot more things that you need to be able to do, whether you are a DevOps professional, a security professional, or some variation in between. And that means that having your community around you, being able to ask questions, run experiments, whether they be in your organization or another organization, is truly a powerful way for the entire industry to operate and be ahead of attackers. Thank you so much.